Hello Gecko fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Gecko again. You thought I just kept geckos. Well in this video, I'm going to show you the pigs that we keep. Yes, they're right here. So let's take a look. Well, they're not really pigs. Last week we covered one of the banded geckos, Coleonyx variegatus, and this week we're going to cover Coleonyx mitralis. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out this bin, we'll put it in an area where we can take a look at the setup, and we'll take a look at the geckos. Be right back. I mentioned earlier in the video that these are our pigs, and for geckos, these are our messiest geckos that we have. I have a top on, unlike our uh, video from the Coleonyx variegatus, because these guys are a little bit wild, they run quite a bit, so we're going to try to contain, I'm going to try to contain them as much as I possibly can in this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at their enclosure and I'll talk about these geckos. You can see the absolute mess this tank is in all the time. Their food dish is filled with the substrate. Their water dish is filled with the substrate. Everything gets messy in here. So every time we feed, we've got to go through the same routine. Empty out the water dish, empty out the food dish, refill everything, and start from scratch. Coleonyx mitratus belongs to a genus called, obviously, Coleonyx, and it's made up of several different species. Some of these species have subspecies. Let me put the list up right now. In the hobby, Coleonyx mitratus and variegatus are the two that are most often found when looking for a banded gecko. The nickname is Central American Banded Gecko, like I mentioned earlier and it doesn't have any subspecies. If you remember, Coleonyx variegatus is a more arid banded gecko. We keep them over sand and don't mist as often. Here, you can see that we're keeping Mitratus over a different substrate. This is more of a uh, jungle mix substrate. It absorbs water and maintains the humidity very well. So every week we go in, we fill the water dish, we refill the uh, mealworm cup with calciums and supplements, we clean up the enclosure a little bit, as best as we can. We try to level off the substrate. And we check on the animals. This is a 12 quart container, but I have them set up for breeding purposes. It's best to set them up in a 10 gallon if you can. These are terrestrial, and they are nocturnal. They come from Central America, like the name suggests. And again, I'm going to try to maintain these in the, in the setup, but they do tend to run quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can feed them here. And we feed mealworms, dubias, uh, sometimes crickets. And I'll show you the, the appropriate size to feed these guys. They have a very, very good feeding response, so I never worry about them eating. <clears throat> it looks like they're a little bit camera shy. Again, these geckos are very, very similar to the leopard gecko, other than that they need a little bit more humidity than leopard geckos. I always feed in this mealworm cup because I don't like the dubias or other insects running around the enclosure. A couple of other notes about these animals. They do get to be about 7 inches long or so, and they live to be about 12 years old or so. I'm going to go ahead and throw in some mealworms as well, just to give them an additional food item. I really, really don't think that they like to be under these, be under these lights. An additional note, under the hide that I provide them, I moisten that area, and that's where they'll normally lay their eggs. 
This enclosure setup is ambient temperatures and I like to keep them a little bit warmer because they do come from Central America. So the ambient temperature is around 80 degrees or so, but the warm spot from here back is around 90 to 94 degrees. You might think that these food items are a little bit too big for these geckos, but I find the bigger that you can feed them, as long as they can eat it, the better. This one had no problems whatsoever eating that large dubia. It looks like they're getting a little anxious being out like this. So I'm going to go ahead and real quick check for eggs. And we'll see if we have any eggs. Hopefully they don't get too rambunctious and try to leave the enclosure on me. But look, checking for eggs is a simple matter of just digging through the substrate in this moister area. And seeing if we have eggs. And it looks like we don't today. Although I do have a couple that are in the incubator. And I do have one baby that I'd like to show you. Let's go ahead and take a look at that baby. I'll put the lid on this container so they don't run away. And I'll put them away a little bit later. Here's the very first baby from Coleanus midratus, and I keep them very in a very simple enclosure. This is just a small deli cup, a dish of water, and their hide. It's as simple as that. I feed these guys uh, fruit flies, baby mealworms, and dwarf white isopods. They love the isopods. Let's take a look at this one. without getting the sand all over the place. Here we go. And let's take a peek. And let's get a little closer on this guy. Hopefully. Such a cute little gecko. You can see how cute this little guy is. Nice clean bands. And again, under his hide, I like to keep it real nice and moist. Let's put the hide back in. And we'll say goodbye to this one for now. The animals have been put away. I'm going to go ahead and put away the uh, photo equipment here. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions at all about this animal, please leave a comment below. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, Gecko fans.